Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another weekly Alviso Criterium. Got an exciting one for you today. Um, let's talk about the course conditions real fast, the teams. So, uh, so well, you guys know this course by now, right? We won't have to talk about the course too much. We'll talk about the wind direction, though. I'd say it's a moderate tailwind through the start-finish and uh, the teams. So, so you guys know SJBC, that's San, San Jose Bike Club. They're out here in these light blue jerseys. The Thirsty Bear, the powerful Thirsty Bear duo, Jerome and Blaine. And then a uh, special guest today, that is my former teammate Matt on Tayrun Elite, who's just been on fire lately. He was uh, on the channel in the last video I made about Watsonville, so he's definitely got to look out for. And then I wanted to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, and that is Token Wheels. Well, actually, not just wheels. So Token makes other things, too. They make bottom brackets, headsets, things like that, but um, I think they're best known for their wheels. They're one of these brands that I think people new to the sport or, or outside of cycling just coming into it. They haven't heard of Token Wheels. They've heard of Trek. They've heard of Specialized. They've heard of these big brands. Uh, Token doesn't have the same marketing budget. They have high-quality products. Uh, one of the, the big local P12 race teams that dominated the local scene when I was first coming up, they all used uh, Token products. And, um, yeah, they're worth checking out. So go to their website. I'll leave a link in the description. And with that said, let's get into today's race. All right, so we have Thirsty Bear on the front lighting it up like they like they do. That's uh, that's pretty much a theme in probably the last five or ten Alviso videos I've done. And the chase has just started to give up. So, so oh, this is one of my favorite guys. This is the slingshot, right? I'm coming from, like, 15th wheel. And, yeah, I did, like, 800 watts there for a second. But I'm not doing crazy. I'm dodging some plants. <laughs> I'm dodging some plants on my right. But I don't have to do crazy amount of power to get separation. And that's that's why it's so important to start, you know, like maybe 15th wheel like I did right there and just carry that momentum. The front riders are slowing down. You're speeding up. That speed differential is what you're looking for when you're trying to, to um, establish a breakaway to get separation. And that's what exactly what I'm doing because I don't want to just tow everybody up to this group. You can see it's got Matt in there. It's got both Thirsty Bear guys and somebody else I can't quite see yet. Anyway, a very threatening looking group. And uh, I want to be a part of that. I mean, this could just roll away if you're not careful. So Thirsty Bear smartly just gets right back on the gas with Blaine. Jerome is looking around like, hey, you going to chase that? <laughs> you going to chase that? <laughs> I give him a fist bump, though. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to chase that. This is, this is a good setup. Jerome's not going to chase his teammate, right? But it's something that I'm not going to rush into right away because, well, it's 18 kilometers to go. It's a long way to go solo. And I just don't want to have to go super deep, super early on, because sometimes it's hard to get yourself out of a hole that you dig uh, this early on in a race. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill. I'm going to relax. I'm going to let Blaine sit out there by himself in the wind. You know, manage his gap, not let it get out of control. But I'm not going to overreact. I'm going to be patient with this one. And he was out there for like a solid two and a half laps. Uh, now we're, we're just, uh, just under 12 kilometers to go. And he's about to get caught. So this is an important time. And, you know... The result of me sitting in while, you know, mostly others did the chasing is look at my heart rate, 155 beats per minute. Like, we're pretty chill. I guarantee that Blaine's heart rate is not 155 beats per minute in this moment out there by himself. So I'm going to start moving up in preparation for him to get caught because that's always a very critical moment in the race when a breakaway gets brought back. That's always when the counterattack goes and you have to be in position. You have to be prepared for that moment. And, and I want you to notice, too, that I moved up on the inside, on the right side. That's the sheltered side of the wind, so I'm, I'm using as little energy as possible. So here's Blaine. He's been caught. No counterattack. So Blaine's like, why not? Let's go again, because Blaine, Blaine's super strong. So why would Blaine do this, though, right? He just attacked. He just got brought back, and now he's going to go again? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Well, actually, it does for, for a couple of reasons. One, Blaine isn't a field sprinter, so why would Blaine just sit in and wait for things to come down to a field sprint. Blaine's trying to, to attack and break away. And in doing so, not only does he give himself a better chance at winning, but also for his team. Because if he's off the front, he's taking the pressure off his teammate Jerome, who is a field sprinter, a national champion for that matter. We get this little separation here. You see it drew out Matt here too in the pink jersey. And uh, Matt's no dummy. Matt can spot those moments as well, just as good as anybody else. So, so this one looked, looked promising, but you know, still 10 kilometers to go. It'll reshuffle at least a couple more times. And it did reshuffle quite a bit, actually. The middle of this race was pretty chaotic. I even put in a couple of pretty hard digs when I thought we had a good shot at staying away from the, the chasing field. But it was just one of those days when, uh, you know, the, the right group didn't come together. And fast forward to three kilometers to go, we're all back together, coming through one lap to go, getting ready for a field sprint. And I don't want to be on the front. So I'm going to casually try to take a sip of my bottle here. 
and see if I can get other other people to chase. This isn't the spot to be. It, coming through one lap to go. It looks like I get a, a I coax a pull out of Jerome here, but I don't even want to be like second wheel. I want to be further back in the draft, maybe tenth or twelfth at this point. I want the teams like SJBC, Thirsty Bear. I want those guys to be on the front setting tempo and keeping it together in this last lap. So, so this is what I'm doing. I'm going to fall back. I'm going to try to find that that sweet spot of, like I said, 10 or ten or 12. You see, I'm surrounded now by SJBC riders on my left here at the black and white kit. That's um, Timmy. He's actually an SJBC rider. For whatever reason, he wasn't wearing the kit today. But this is what you want to do. I guess I'll just talk through the, the last two kilometers of this race, kind of give you guys my thought process as we close out the last little bit here and uh, you can see I'm, I'm doing a little surge in pace here but that's one of the other benefits of being further back in the group is the front there might be attacks flying like big efforts flying and you almost don't even feel it if you're further back in the group so you don't want to be like at the back of the pack inside of two kilometers to go if you want to contest the field sprint but you also don't want to be you know third wheel or second wheel that's not the place to be either so I think I'm happy now with uh, my, my position here I have Matt in front of me my sights I have Jerome in front of me in my sights. I can keep a, a close eye on them because I don't really want them to get to get too far in front of me. They're going to definitely be contesting the field sprint. So I want to make sure I'm around them. Maybe I can benefit from their sprint. And it looks like it looks like there's some control on the front now. It's a little bit faster than it was before. That's probably SJBC doing that work or it's somebody attacking. It's something like that. But the point is I'm not doing that work. So that's good. It looks like there is a single rider off the front and it looks like the Thirsty Bear rider uh, was was setting tempo on the front to bring that back. Actually, that might have been San Jose, but you get the point. That's why I want to be back here. Now, 1,200 meters to go. It's time to start thinking about your position. Like, you're always thinking about your position because I want to let you guys in on a little secret here. Position is more important than your training, than your equipment, <laughs> than your fitness. Like, it's, it's the most important thing in this moment of a crit. If you're trying to contest the field sprint, one kilometer to go. So so Matt's decided he's going to commit to jump across to this little group that's forming. It looks like there's two or three riders off the front. It looks like Matt's going to commit some energy to get across to it. I'm not sure I'm crazy about that idea. So I'm going to still try to lean on these riders. I'm going to yell at my buddy Paul here to see if he can do it. Uh, he looks over, and then, and then Tim takes over on the front. Total bro move. This is a hero pull right here. I think Tim is just trying to empty the tank here, stitch it all back up. Super stoked on this because... Yeah, like they have three, four seconds up the road, and that looks really threatening with 600 meters to go. So what if Tim doesn't do this? I probably just wait until we make this right-hander into the tailwind, and then I launch as, er as early as I can. I wait for the tailwind to try to deter other people from sitting in my draft. But you know what? That's what I end up doing anyway right here. Tim just got me like most of the way there. So look, I did like 1,200 watts, and I, I get an immediate gap because of that tailwind, because of that sudden acceleration. I'm preventing other people from just sitting in my draft because I don't want to drag them to the line. And now I'm like stealth mode. I want to sneak up on Matt, but Matt looks back. He sees me. He starts his sprint, but I think it was after like two seconds too long of hesitation. So by the time he starts sprinting, I'm already on terms with his back wheel, carrying more speed than him. So once I come out of his draft, I already have like a one or two mile an hour head start. And uh, that's all she wrote. That's how the 30-second uh, sprint got me another win at Alviso. Well, you know, a lot of help by Tim. Thanks again, Tim. A lot of help by the tailwind. But more than anything, it was good timing, good position. So uh, thanks for hanging in there, guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. And as always, catch you guys in the next one.